First, though, I just thought what you thought of the debate last night, and there were some good moments for the Prime Minister, some, some good moments uh, for the Leader of the Opposition. I wonder if you got a glimpse of what this campaign might have been, if not for all the, the crazy distractions. Well, I think, as you said, it was very clear. This is a vote about the future. It's not about the past. We've been through some difficult times, there's no doubt about it. Some have made some mistakes. Many things we've delivered have been very important to people through the COVID crisis and cost of living crisis, of course. And I think most people recognise that on the doorstep. But what he clearly pointed out is this is a decision about the next five years. The next five years, you've got somebody with a clear plan, somebody who's proven in the heat of battle has been able to execute well and put things in, in place that are important to people, or somebody with no plan and no answers. That's the choice that people have, and my choice is clear on that. And I, I get the move for change in the country. You know, I, I was in a taxi coming to, coming to the studio today, and a taxi driver saying, oh, you know, uh, Labour will probably get in, it'll be a disaster, but Labour will get in. Don't settle for that. Don't settle for that kind of that solution. Don't surrender to that. We have got a clear plan for the future. The economy is improving. Inflation is under control. We have a bright future ahead. That's what Rishi Sunak offers, whereas mm. Keir Starmer has no plan, no answers, no solutions. Well, but, but both parties have, have their own plans. We could disagree over them, but, but it's, it's not true to say there's no plan. And in, in terms of looking forward, um, and, and uh, I want to make sure we do that, but equally... In my first question was, was the implication clear there's been a lot of errors during the campaign trail that also have needed to be responded to. On the topic of uh, politicians placing bets on politics, without needing to go into the, the precise details of some of the things being investigated, is it time just to make a hard and fast rule politicians can't bet on politics? Uh, you know, it's under their sphere of influence. In sports, it's not allowed. Hard and fast. Footballers can't bet on football. I think we should have a debate about it. I'm not against uh, a ban on politicians ban uh, betting on politics, but I think we should have a proper debate, proper look at this, and make a decision that everybody's clear on what's expected and what's allowed and what's not allowed, and make, make a decision from there. Um, in terms of, uh, of the junior doctor strikes, Wes Streeting has said that he would meet junior doctors on the 5th of July if Labour won. Um, would the Conservatives do the same, or of your discussions with junior doctors reach, reach an impasse that means there's, there's nothing to gain from short-term further discussions? No, we should always have a discussion. I always sit across the, uh, the negotiation table and see if we can deal with this. Um, an offer's already been made. I think uh, junior doctors have already received a 9% received a pay increase this year and there was discussions about a further 3% increase on top of that. So I think those are fair figures. What the junior doctors are asking for is 35% which taxpayers, of course, would have to fund. I don't think that's affordable. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what Labour would do in the same situation. I hear calls all the time in Parliament, oh, yes, we would settle this dispute by now. But to what level and what cost to the taxpayer? So we've got to have a, a fair negotiation. It's fair to the junior doctors, who would do a fantastic job, but also fair to the taxpayer. We're, and we're going to discuss that with Labour at five past eight. Do, do you think it's deliberately provocative of junior doctors to strike during the final week of the election campaign? Well, it's interesting timing. It really is. Deliberately it's, Well, it's, it's not been a strike for some time. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to judge somebody's motivation for a decision, but it is interesting timing. And, uh, and I regret the decision to strike because we know this, this doesn't help waiting lists, which we want to bring down. We are bringing them down now. But part of the reason the waiting lists as high as they are is partially because of those strikes. So we don't want people to strike. We want people to get, get back to work, be paid a fair wage for a fair day's work. Um, and that's what I think everybody does want, including the junior doctors. And so I would urge everybody to get to the negotiation table, but settle for something that's reasonable, reasonable to the junior doctors, reasonable to the taxpayer. Um, I wanted to talk about the, the spat that broke out in the last 24 hours relating to a tweet that the Conservative account put out uh, involving Martin Lewis. Um, your party jumped on a comment that might have uh, allowed the party to score a point, the idea that uh, Labour... Uh, figures might have told Martin Lewis that some things hadn't been included um, in, in the manifesto. Uh, and I, I guess it seems that rather than settling to try and score one point, you reached to try and score ten points uh, and included details in a, in a tweet that weren't uh, accurate. Certainly an exaggeration, if not an outright 
fabrication. Is it a sign of desperation, even more than that, with the tweets that followed almost implosion from Conservative Party headquarters? Well, I think if we've tweeted something that's inaccurate, that's wrong. We shouldn't do that. We, we don't need to be inaccurate because Labour Party has been quite clear. I saw West Streeting on Laura Koonsberg a few uh, a week or two ago who said, who said quite clearly the manifesto is not the sum total of its spending plans. I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that Labour will spend more in the next Parliament than they've already committed to do, and that will result in more taxation. And that's a choice people have. But so we don't need to be inaccurate. If we've been accurate, we shouldn't do that. But the same applies to you, doesn't it? I mean, we could talk about the Rwanda plan. It was not mentioned anywhere in anybody's manifestos back in 2019. It's cost an absolute fortune. Um, it's fair to say that both manifestos, as we sit here today for 2024, there'll be things that come up in the next parliament that aren't mentioned in them. Well, we don't believe so. We don't believe there'll be anything we will do in the next parliament that will create extra taxation. That's the key, because but, but, but sorry. we've got a plan sorry, to control sorry, public sorry. spending. But that's a ludicrous thing to say. Is it? OK. Well, in 2019, did you predict that you'd have to spend an absolute fortune on the pandemic, no, on the sure. war in Ukraine, on this Rwanda no, plan? Of course. Of course we didn't. How could you possibly predict So that? how can you sit here now and say the Conservatives, and only the Conservatives, not Labour, promise that the manifesto contains every single pound you'll need to spend in the next government? No, you're right to say, I, I can't promise that in terms of... You just so, tried to suggest No, I, I don't think... You know, it's about the plans for the future. That's the difference. Of course, if there's some once-in-a-lifetime event that happens in the next parliament, of course that would be different. Different for Labour, different for us. The difference here is, Labour, we know Labour has other plans. We know they will increase public spending. Everybody I speak to knows that. West Streeting has admitted that. That's not the... Their, their sum total of their spending plans. You've seen that already. So Darren Jones, one of their, the chief secretary of their treasury, one of the key treasury ministers, has said it will cost hundreds of billions of pounds to decarbonise the economy. It, we know these plans are afoot. They're just not being honest about them. That, that, that is a plan they've been open about, which they see... But they're not costing. They see, no, that they, they think the private sector will fund, which is a question mark that I will put to Labour at, at five past eight, but it's not, it's not a, something that they say will be public funded. Just to come back to the, the issue with the Martin Lewis tweet, as we said, that there was something perhaps that the party could have focused on, instead fabricated an extra fact in it and it's led to a spat. Do you, as a, as a hard-working minister and MP that wants to continue to, to win your seat, look at these errors during the last five weeks of the campaign trail and lament and think our party has made this, perhaps you'd even say our leader has made this a lot harder than it should have been for us? Well, I don't know the facts of that particular case. I, I couldn't uh, endorse your comment that it's fabricated. I don't know. But if something is inaccurate, it should not be. Do I, do I regret some of the mistakes that people have made over recent weeks? Of course I do. Of course I do. Because it's a distraction from what really counts in this election. And what counts in the election is the next five years. And it's such a clear choice. You have lower taxation, lower migration under a Conservative government, higher taxation, higher migration under a Labour government. In my view, on the doorstep, everybody knows that. And anything that clouds that decision, that clear decision, of course, is an unwelcome distraction. Kevin Hollerick, thank you so much for stopping by. My pleasure, by. Thank We you. appreciate it.